Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series starting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be answering the question, what is a counterfactual? Now, counterfactuals are used in many places beyond philosophy, but have a home in philosophy as well. Counterfactuals are sometimes defined as conditional statements where the antecedent, the first half of the conditional, is false. <clears throat> Such as, if Hillary Clinton had have campaigned more in the Midwest, she would be president. So, with the temporal language moved out of it, if Hillary Clinton campaigns more in the Midwest, she is president. Something roughly like that. If pigs can fly, I'll try your horrible cooking. Or, if you had have eaten that street meat, you would be sick. So, pigs can't fly, Hillary Clinton didn't campaign enough in the Midwest, and you didn't eat that street meat. Because all of those things are false, that means that these are counterfactuals. Note that for something to be a counterfactual, the consequent, the second half of the conditional, does not need to also be false. I could still try your horrible cooking, even if pigs never are able to be able to fly, and you could still get sick even without ingesting street meat. Now, counterfactuals play an important role in many theories of causation. When we find out that two events are correlated, whenever I eat salmon, my face swells, we often want to draw a causal link and claim that my eating salmon caused my face to swell. <clears throat> a counterfactual theory of causation tells us that in order to show this, we must prove the counterfactual. Namely, if I had have not eaten salmon, but all else was the same, would my face have swollen? I'm not going to go into theories of causation here or even give too detailed of a theory of the counterfactual theory of causation. I'm just trying to demonstrate how these theories can be used. So, imagine we have the past and we have the present. We have the actual world in the present and we have the closest possible world where I did not eat salmon. I did eat salmon in the actual world and my face swole up. If we were in this situation, so where the closest possible world where I did not eat salmon, and in that world my face is still swollen, then we would say, if we were under a counterfactual theory of causation, we would say that the salmon did not cause my face to swell up, because in the closest possible world where I didn't eat salmon, my face is still swollen. Whereas, if the closest possible world where I did not eat salmon was a situation where I didn't eat salmon and my face is not swollen, that would be the truth maker for the causal claim, salmon caused my face to swell. All right? Once again, very rough picture of counterfactual theories of causation. We'll go into it more in a future video or series all on causation, but for now, hopefully that gives you a sense of what a counterfactual is. The counterfactual is that claim in that next closest possible world. And if you can know that claim, the counterfactual theory of causation says, you can know whether or not the causal claim is true. If I can know whether, if I hadn't have eaten salmon, I would or wouldn't have had a swollen face, given everything else equal, then I can know that the salmon caused my face to swell. Like I said, we're not going into depth here on theories of causation, but there are many subtly different versions of this theory, as well as many objections to it. For now, it suffice to say that counterfactuals are conditionals where the antecedent is false. And since we can never know the counterfactual, we can't look into another possible world, we can never truly prove causation, at least under the counterfactual model of causation. But it's that possible world under that model which makes those causal statements true. We'll do future videos on causation, but hopefully that gives you a sense of counterfactuals and what people are talking about when they say you can't know the counterfactual. What do you think? Can we ever know the counterfactual? Is the counterfactual theory of causation a convincing theory? If we know the counterfactual, would we be able to know that one thing causes another? Is that last sentence a counterfactual itself? And is that sentence the same, really, as the second sentence. 
Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.